Popo's feud with Palyulu Princess Sola, spanned almost a half of season 2. It included an interminable deduction of points, imposing rescues, a severe mental re-education punishment, and one weird kiss. The current generation of the running men is awesome, and these running men became awesome convincingly when they saved the world by knocking down the Earth God Alcus before season 1 ended. But things had been a little rough for them going to the next season, since a certain someone left the team in a disloyal way. But it's good they still have this guy, Popo of the Pink Tribe. The youngest. The cutest. The most enchanted. And the shortest of all the running men. A penguin youngster, who is decent, but also known for his card magic then his running man aptitude. Sola on the other hand, is the princess of the Palulus, the daughter of the current Polulu tribe King Solpipa, and also the warden of the running man survival training camp. But before these two met for the first time, Popo was involved in the war for the Materian, as the representative of his endearing penguin tribe, by participating in the 100th season of the Running Man Championship. From the very outset, Popo has never won a single game as a running man competitor, until he joined forces with Lonky and Pala to win the last main game, before his running man squad trounced the overpowered DV7 in three rounds, as well as the wicked host of the competition, Charming Gold. The team would then have to endeavor perhaps the most difficult task of saving the world, by defeating Alcus after his resurrection. At first, they looked like they were toast, because some of them were succumbed by Alcus' lethal attacks. Later, Popo was very worried about Liu when he was about to be attacked by Alcus. While witnessing this dreadful affair, Popo used his time card to reverse time in order to change the past, literally. Oh, and Popo got a much younger by the way right after. Anyway, after the running men finally got the better of Alcus, Popo soon returned back to his normal age thanks to Palace brand new herbal potion. But upon arriving to Old City beyond belief, the running men were punished by the mighty ruler Rakong for ceasing the resurrection of Alcus, instead of giving them a reward, because that is actually how Polyulus react, to how the running men throttle the revival of Alcus. Popo was among almost all the running men who were condemned by a 300-year jail sentence, but Akong opportunely gave them another chance to acquit their wrongdoings, by letting them participate in the competition he's hosting, the Running Man Survival, but Popo has not even won a single solo match, going back to the Running Man Championship, until his first game in the Running Man Survival, when he won against his brother Lonky with a tremendous comeback win. And after a relief in the first main game, the job's not quite done yet for Popo and the Running Men. They had to go through three more gateways in order to have freedom. And so, they exited the playing stage, and entered, some kind of training facility. Popo attempted to make a run for it alongside Lonky, but they did not realize they were on a floating island. And while the duo felt doomed about their confinement in Old City, they saw a lassie snooping at them, and frightened her once they hastened. <coughs> they ensuingly hauled her towards his allies thereafter, and the lassie began to introduce herself. Listen, I am your warden Sola! Warden? As Sola was doing so, the running men did not realize that she is the warden, and, they also did not even realize they were actually in a training camp, a place where criminals are instructed to become grade A athletes. Sola then explained the rules to the running men, which were made grim for them. 1. It is obvious that the players should play in the running man survival, until their prison sentences expire. 2. They may never leave the training camp grounds. Popo casually asked, what would they even do about it? Sola responded to him, players who leave will double their sentences. At this juncture, one of the players tried to escape by leaping as high as he could, but a force field prevented him to cross the border. Popo warned Sola about the guy landing at her, but Sola did not listen, and, panicked. After the guards took away the guy, Sola gave Popo a deduction of 10 points for, nothing. And that explains rule number 3. A simple violation of the warden's rules costs a player a deduction. Sola further stated a punishment turned severe, may lead to a drastic penalty of attending mental re-education. That moment sparked the feud between these two, as Popo was unhappy with the ugly deduction. And the feud began to erupt when Sola stated rule number 4, which is, very obvious to everyone. The players must obey the warden's rules no matter what! Popo did not like that rule too, and the two began to go at it, by sticking their cheeks, but an alarm fortunately stopped their confrontation. And that is when Solo explained rule number 5, as she presented a daily schedule for the running men, 
who were absolutely disappointed with their schedule, especially when Blanky reacted adversely to a quick shower time of 30 seconds. A few moments later when the running men entered the lounge and discussed about their imprisonment, Popo changed the topic, and started taunting Sola, by calling her bossy, and mocking her with a high-pitched voice. Minus one point! All players <laughs> must listen to what I say! While Popo was ridiculing their own warden, Sola was just slowly standing up next to Popo, only to scare the running man. Popo thought his teammates did not believe what he was saying about escaping the training camp all along, and called himself the master of the tantrum. Sola finally paid Popo's attention, which induced Popo to look behind. <coughs> Popo clearly did not realize that Sola was actually behind him, who yet punished him with a 30-point deduction. And the guy who called himself, the master of the tantrum, threw a tantrum in front of Sola, to immediately cancel the deduction and recklessly called her a little twerp. And Sola answered back with another deduction, of 50 more points, and called him, the king of the twerps. Popo contradicted Sola's name calling, and sticked heads with Sola once more. But Sola wasn't done yet with the running man, as she quickly punished them for their unseemly behavior, like, Giga folding his arms, Miyo crossing her legs, Pala taking a nice nap on the couch, and Li Yu picking his nose, which cost them a two-point deduction. I wasn't picking my nose! Sola then monitored cautiously at Longki, who stood up so stiff, once Sola stared at him, until, he gulped, and was penalized with a two-point deduction as well. Once Sola left the lounge with the running man, who was surprised in silence, Longki quickly blamed Popo for allowing Sola to do whatever the heck she displeases to them. By the end of that episode, Popo lost a total of 90 points, due to Sola's unrelenting acts of deducting, and the deductions don't get any harsher, than what comes next. In the middle of a break time, Lonky wanted to escape the training camp so bad, even when the guards were closely staring at him, or another player attempted to escape the training camp, who yet got himself smashed by the force field, and ended up getting cuffed by guards. Pala and Popo also wanted to join Lonky in escaping, but Sola suddenly showed up to frighten them, which, frightened herself too. Sola immediately deducted their tallies by 10 points, for suspicious conspiring, and told them to split up right away. This time, Popo blamed Lonky for that. Because that is how a brother retaliates his own brother, right? On that evening, a fugitive alert unexpectedly broke out, meaning somebody was already escaped the school. As a warden, Sola had to roll call the running men, to check if any one of them was missing, or perhaps, escaped. After doing so, Sola noticed that Pala was conspicuously missing in the picture, and was ultimately worried about him. But after some time, Lonky and Popo volunteered themselves to find Pala, since they were the ones who last saw him. And so, Sola led them to walk around the training camp to look for Pala, though the security there was so serious because, a lot of guards were just doing their job. And, here come the guards, as they promptly caught Lonky and Popo. But Sola equivocated the guards about sending them to re-education, which provoked Lonky and Popo to pretend worrying about it. The guards then laughed at their faces, and freed them anyway. Popo admired Sola for her clever thinking of lying to the guards, but Sola wasn't pleased. She attempted to give Popo another deduction for evaluating her, but Lonky interrupted her once he saw a bit of Pala's favorite herb, and also a wide open manhole cover, where Pala seemed to have dropped in there. Suddenly, Lonky startled Sola with his silly face, and ultimately ran away. The two argued once more after Lonky fled, and the feud starting to get fired up anew. And you asked us to help look for Paula! I didn't ask you either, you insolent little imp! Who are you to call me little? You I'm taller than you are! But once Popo stepped forward after that fiery altercation, Sola was about to fall into the cover, and took hold of Popo's arm as they both dropped. Popo finally found Paolo underneath the grounds, and met some fellow Palula elders, who believed that they are true heroes. But they wandered all of a sudden thereafter, when they noticed that Sola was speaking at them, as soon as Popo found Sola and ran away along with Pala, Sola immediately deducted their tallies by 200 points for that and chased after them. She managed to stop them by diving her whole body, but when she tried to call the guards, Lonky showed up and covered her mouth to avoid getting caught. I say, this is probably a good chance for Popo to escape the training camp along with his comrades, and they were so rebellious when they attempted escaping the training camp, but their plan, backfired. Sure, they were easily noticed by one of the guards, which raised the alarm, and were chased by more guards afterwards. 
and sure, the shuttles in the training camp are so slow when Lonky rode on one of them, and they are much slower than people running. And sure, their good chance of escaping was ruined, mainly because Popo heard Sola screaming, and calling for help while she was hanging on a cliff. Popo wanted to get out of the training camp so bad, but he's so worried about Sola that she might fall off the cliff. He had to think quickly, before the guys even tried to make an onslaught on them. So after making his decision, Popo decided to save Sola, and said this to her once he grabbed her arm before she fell. Come on up here, you little twerp! Sola did not react much to that, as Popo pulled her hand as hard as he could, but he failed, and was luckily saved by Lonky. Sola and the trio didn't stand a chance, when the guards keenly trapped them with their swords, but Sola told them to stop whatever they're doing. She then turned around and glimpsed at the trio with a cute expression, and said this. Vandalism minus 10 points, injuring guards minus 10 points, and insubordination in attempt to escape minus 200. <laughs> so, let's recap Popo's deductions once more in this episode. He first lost 10 points for suspicious conspiring with Lonky and Pala. He lost 200 points for running away from Sola. He lost 10 points for vandalism, which they probably never did. He lost another 10 points for injuring guards, in which Pala was responsible for that. And another loss of 200 points due to an insubordination in attempt to escape the training camp. So, that's a total of 430 points, and that led to MENTAL REEDUCATION! After a long term of attending re-education, a lot has changed for these three. And as you can see through their non-verbal communication skills, the trio felt like it was a nightmare for them once they were dismissed, but they improved their manners. Like instead of passing over the guards, they greeted them by bowing their heads. And instead of ignoring Sola who told them to prepare for the games and warned them of possible deductions, they expressed assent to her right away by saluting. When Liu asked them how re-education went, Popo answered he never wanted to return there again. So Popo, if you don't want to go back to re-education, don't attempt to escape again, alright? Anyway, after Longi and Popo chose to strangely team up with some Polyulu players, they clawed their way to play in the second main game of the Running Man survival. Though they got eliminated very early in that game only because the cannon they acquired became so useless and got blown out by the gatekeeper Hurricane, their teammate Pala became golden, and stunned Hurricane along with his brother Ensemble to enter the next stage of the survival games even without the help of Longi and Popo's handful roster, and as a result, Pala earned plenty of points once he checked his tally. Lonky and Popo tried to convince Pala to buy an item, instead of reducing his 10-year prison sentence, but he refused to waste his points for an item. But only because Pala was shoved by two Polyulu players, he lost all of his points at one blow. Lonky and Popo felt so miserable that all of Pala's points vanished, and the running men realized that the two Polyulus who pushed Pala, believed that they indeed stole the points Pala earned in the game. And so, they chased after the Polyulus at the same time they returned back to the training camp, but Sola abruptly stood in front of them, and gave attention to them. Popo got very impatient that he wanted to get his hands on the mean Polyulus who contemned Pala. Sola tried to give Popo more attention, but he finally found the two mean Polyulus, and foolishly pushed Sola. The running men would also trample Sola by running over her, especially when Lonky stepped on her body. But they were too late to stop them as the Polyulus were dismissed to leave the training camp because their points, including the points they stole from Pala were enough to do so. Pala cried so loudly that his points were completely gone, and drifted away right after. Sola became furious after she got beaten up by Popo and the running men, and answered back them with Minus 30 points each! We charge you quarters at once! Sure, a 50 point deduction threatened Popo and the running men once more. But that would be Sola's last time of deducting their points, in 6 episodes. So, if we add all of Popo's deductions, he lost an aggregate of 570 points, since day 1. And that day, something strange happened. Well, a couple of strange things happened. Lights were not supposed to be out in the middle of a break time. But they're automatically out on that day, because this gal appeared, and reminded the running men that the only way to escape Old City is to win the running man survival games and offered them their cards for the next game. That was strange. Also, Mio's actually a member of Metronome. Again, that was strange. And while they huddled themselves to perform their shout out before they played their next game, Sola placed her hand on the running men's hands from nowhere. And the running men didn't notice that Sola was in the lounge the whole time once they panicked. Sola tried to look around the lounge and thought they're hiding something from her. Again, 
that was strange. In any case, the running men would play one of their unusual games they have ever played through their entire running man careers, wherein Popo yet lost another solo match against Mio in a game of card flipping. After that, he was among the eliminated during their next gatekeeper battle, and was ended up in a ventilation stock, where players usually got thrown out of the games. He was along with Lonky, Mio, and the same group of polular welders, who were the only ones who trusted the running men. Oh, and King Sol, the father of Solar, and the original Polyulu King, was among them. He couldn't believe that he's finally got to meet the running men, including Popo, through his poop head and his short legs. But after a while, the compressor was slowly coming down because, it was turned off by, Solar. What? That little guy followed us here? Popo did not know that Solar was actually the Polyulu princess, until the time King Sol and his servants greeted her in regret. King Sol was so confused when he heard Sola's voice, only because her voice got deeper, and it wasn't normal at all. His servants convinced Sola to take her hat, but she did not listen. They wanted to take off Sola's hat out of her head, because it controlled her mind the whole time. And once Miyo saw the unusual look of Sola's eyes, she realized that Sola was brainwashed by the High Priest Akong. Sure, Akong is a High Priest that is this evil, but we will get to that in a little bit. Anyway. Popo quickly figured out how to get that hat out of Sola's head in no time, in which Lonky would stretch his body to become a trampoline, while Miyo would jump her way to the base of the compressor to throw the others towards Sola. The servants were the first ones to try to stop her, but they initially tried to scare her many times, which it didn't work out. King Sol wanted to try stopping her brainwashed daughter, but he already got afraid when he was about to be hurled. After he yet got himself smashed by the wall instead of Sola, he somehow found a way to remove the hat out of her head, but it still didn't work out. Mio then swiftly threw Popo straight on to Sola, and... <laughs> His kiss removed her hat, and Sola was no longer brainwashed. His father got infuriated on what he just saw, and he even definitely wanted to sabotage Popo using his cane. Popo then asked to him if he certainly wanted to kiss Sola in the first place, and called that kiss, nasty. Sola also got infuriated when she heard that Popo called her nasty, and she responded by, slapping him using her ears. King Sol along his servants and his daughter considerably wanted to beat up Popo that they were really fed up with him. Popo's feud with Sola diminished after that kiss but both of them re-entered the spotlight of their relationship a few episodes later. When Akong was about to be reborn while he was getting sucked in a giant monster body, Sola risked her life to prevent Akong from getting in, and kept annoying him a lot, until she pounced him with her lengthy ears. Unfortunately, Sola was ended up getting sucked in the monster's mouth, and landed in the core of the monster instead, while Akong became one of the toes of the monster, which I think is hilarious. The Running Man including Popo, were so surprised to what Sola did out there. They tried to rescue Sola, but the gatekeepers said to them that it's impossible to do so. Luckily, Charming Gold, who was actually the Iron Beast all along, had a brilliant plan to rescue Sola before she would turn out to be the permanent part of the monster. And in fact, Gold's capable of absorbing any material, like energy. So, Gold would make a path to the monster's body by absorbing the energy gained from the monster. After the cannon that Lonky and Popo got from the Running Man survival, finally worked, and tripped the solar shaped monster, Gold opened up a hole in the monster's body by absorbing the monster's energy, and informed the Running Man to enter right away in order to save Solar. The hole was so small that the Running Man couldn't fit in there. But Popo was their last hope. Lonky threw Popo straight into the hole, which Popo called more of a bummer. He landed on the force field of the core thereafter, and noticed that the cores almost sucked up the body of Solar. Popo tried to destroy the force field by pushing it as hard as he could, while he was waking up Sola, but the force field bounced him back. Just as Sola finally woke up, Popo then attempted to use some of his cards like his lightning card, his ice card, and his fire dragon card, but the force field rebounded his guard attacks. He then tried pushing the force field so forcefully again, that Sola was about to be absorbed by the core. He pushed it very, very hard, until, he finally dismantled the entire force field, and fluttered towards the core right after. Popo barely took hold of Sola's ears before she got absorbed by the core, and pulled them as hard as he could, to finally save her from the core. Uh. 
yet another monumental rescue by the delicate, but courageous penguin youngster, who yet saved the Polyulu princess, twice. And he saved the day once more. Well, almost. And because Akong unexpectedly emerged from the very toe of the monster, he obviously put himself into the monster's core, so he could take over the world once more. But the running men would again pull off another victory against another enemy, led by Pala's competent skills of shaking. Meanwhile, the building was practically shaking, when the Polyulu crowd like the gatekeepers, King Sol, his servants, and even Sola, kind of also helped the running men out, by dancing for joy, while they were floating along with Akong, who exploded himself soon thereafter. And remember the two Polyulus who took responsibility for stealing Pala's points during the running man survival? Well, Sola also had her own heroic story, besides Popo and the running men. Before Akong exploded, she yet again put herself at risk by preventing one of them from getting sucked by the reborn Akong, and headbutted him so hard afterwards, in which the Polyulu crowd idolized her right after. Regardless of that, Popo and the running men finally ended the reign of the evil priest Akong in Old City, and restored peace in the world once again. Or, I guess, both Popo and Sola, end the reign of Akong, and restore peace together. So yeah, any animosity between these two youngsters is just a thing in the past. The actual peak of this feud, only existed for a matter of days since the running men's first arrival in the training camp. But the fire reactions of every quarrel, the spectacle of every rescue, the way those deductions and punishments horned at Popo, and the way they treat Takong for his evilness, remind us that the entirety of the feud, can stick with you for a while. Hey. Thanks for watching Feud Files. If you got any more feuds you would like to watch, feel free to suggest them, and remember to click the like button and the subscribe button right here for upcoming episodes.